Recently, my brother and cousin visited me in Rochester, New York, and we decided it'd be an awesome idea to go fossil hunting. We often enjoy some pretty simple forms of entertainment. Beal, eating cheese, typical New York shit. My cousin Ryan had heard about a place near Buffalo called Penn Dixie, where you can collect fossils and keep everything you find for a fixed entry price. After finding a ton of cool ancient sea animals, I was looking for a way to display them without adding to my already crowded shelves. In contrast, my walls are pretty bare, so I decided it'd be an awesome idea to create a custom frame to prominently display my finds. Welcome to the Underlife. This is the story of how I created a home for my oldest aquatic pets. Risking breaking it. Risking breaking that. I gotta say, though Penn Dixie is a non-profit, they do kind of have the slyest business model since this 70s businessman named Gary made millions of dollars actually selling pet rocks. Penn Dixie acquired an abandoned cement quarry behind a buffalo suburb and has resumed excavation. Except now, the workers pay them. They're using children, elderly, veterans. It's all in their online pricing guide. With a fossil and about one of every three rocks I picked up, I happily paid $16 to haul away a small bucket load. My cousin Ryan and I stayed right until closing, always knowing that the next rock we turn over could be the biggest and rarest find of the day. The next day, I created these sketches exploring different ways of displaying the fossils. I think the first one here was having little shelves that they sit on that can be moved around. There could be strands of thread fossils would be kind of wedged between the the threads this one i i wrote cork so i think i was thinking of having basically fossil popsicles that you stick down into the cork and pick where you want it to go and then here i got into closer to what i ended up doing so the fossils are suspended off of the background that's why i tried to show that by doing these like shadows behind it um, but then i ended up having the idea right here have it have a led so um, instead of shadows separating the fossils from the background, there's there's light. And after that, I went on to uh, laying out on a page the fossils that I was thinking of using and determining where the fossils could, could sit on the page and the size of the page that would fit uh, what would fit on my printer. In the end, I decided to lay everything out as a grid like this. I just, I just prefer the look. I usually like kind of a, a artistic movement to things, but this more static layout just seems to suit the subject matter, kind of scientific subject matter. With the frame design and fossil layout decided, I moved on to 3D modeling. I also tested a power supply and one of these pre-wired LEDs to make sure they'd work for the internal backlighting. My plan was for the LEDs to sit inside translucent plastic pegs. Then the fossils would be secured to the front of these glowing plastic wands. As a test, I 3D printed just one peg and tried sliding in an LED to make sure it fit inside.
the main components printed, I began assembling the frame. The barrel jack connector fit snugly in place, but I did notice that the pegs fit quite a bit looser than I wanted. Nothing that a quick reprint couldn't fix. I gave the lights another test, and the effect was just what I was hoping for. Having a grid of holes in back of the frame allows for a flexible arrangement of the pegs. But to create a cleaner look, I concealed the grid with a paper backing. After that, I began soldering together the electrical components. With the wiring all finished, the only thing to do was add the glass to the front of the frame. Uh, whoops. Broken front glass wasn't the only issue I encountered. I thought I could attach the fossils to the light pegs using blue tack, but I found that the fossils would fall off after a few hours. I removed the blue tack and reattached them using hot glue. Then I put in new glass and reassembled the frame. A spacer sits on top of the glass, then the board that holds the light pegs and electronics snaps into place. I plugged the frame in for a final check, and everything was working perfectly. I added my frame to the wall, and the masterpiece was done. And... I kinda wasn't feeling it. The LEDs I had bought were labeled as warm white, but they were more like that old sodium street lamp color. I really wanted something that felt more clean and scientific. So I bought cool white LEDs and redid all of the wiring. I'll leave you now with a sequence showing the rewiring and video of the final result. Let me know in the comments which version you prefer, the warm white or the cool white. Did I make a mistake by switching or do you think I made the right choice? Yeah.